Hello, I'm Gary Dushnitsky. And I am Elisa Alvarez Garrido. And we would like to share with you some of our key findings in the study published in the Strategic Management Journals titled Are Entrepreneurial Ventures Innovation Rate Sensitive to Investors' Complementary Assets? What we do in that study is we seek to explore how, what is the role of different investors and how it affects deep science innovation in different domains. Specifically, we are looking at the biotechnology sector where biotechnology startups or entrepreneurial ventures have been an important source of deep science-based innovation. In the past, independent venture capitalists have been instrumental in funding those startups. But for various reasons, they have slowly reduced their um, the capital allocated. At the same time, many corporate investors tend to back and fund those entrepreneurial ventures, which led us to ask the following questions. To what extent are the biotechnology startup's innovation rate sensitive to different investors and the different um, asset profile that are associated with them? Elisa will share with us some of the basic design that we took to that end. So we wanted to see what is the effect of corporate VCs, but also what are the mechanisms behind it. So we have over 500 biotech startups, all of which are funded by venture capital firms, and about a third are also funded by, funded by a syndicate of cor that also includes corporate VCs. And this gives us a clean effect of what is the corporate VC effect. Um, we compare startups that have similar age and also similar investment amount. And we're very careful with uh, how much of this is selection versus how much of it is nurturing. And we find that selection is indeed one of the mechanisms. So um, corporate VCs do select startups that are more innovative. However, above and beyond that, there is also a nurturing effect. And we find that startups with a corporate VC on the syndicate patent three times as much and publish twice as much as those that only have a, a VC. And so this was, we were very curious as to why do we observe these patterns. And we wanted to get further at what is driving these results. And to that end, we focused on the mechanisms. Specifically, we studied the asset profile of the different investors. And so when you think about it, you have independent and corporate um, venture funds. Both of them share the same number of, uh, not the same number, but a similar number. These tend to be relatively small groups. Where they differ is on a number of dimensions. Importantly, the independent venture capitalists receive most of their money from limited partners, and most of the relationship there is of financial nature. Corporate venture capital, on the other hand, they tend to be associated with large corporations, oftentimes large pharmaceutical firms, that in addition for funding, provide access and support of different type. And in fact, when we look at that, we see that they bring together complementary assets in terms of laboratory infrastructure, R&D talent pool, access to regulatory know-how, and so on and so forth. In table one of the paper, we explicitly talk about or compare these two investors' groups. What is more interesting is that this heterogeneity or diversity in their investment, in their um, resource profile, seem to be associated with the innovation rate of the biotechnology startup. Elisa, can you share with us what, why is that the case? Yeah, we thought about this along the value chain of the innovation. So most biotech startups are involved in the discovery and in the development stage. In the discovery stage, it is very important to have access to the corporate VCs research labs. The proximity uh, increases the, the frequency and, the, and the, the high bandwidth conversations. And what we find is consistent with that uh, proximity having an effect. On the development stage, it matters uh, the regulatory process of the FDA becomes really important, especially for those biotech startups that need uh, to go through the human drug uh, FDA approval process. What we find is again consistent with this. In those cases, it is more relevant to have the corporate VC behind. 
So in sum, what we find is in a sector where deep science innovation is very important, that the complementary assets of the corporate VCs have an effect on the innovation rates of startups. Thank you for listening. I am Elisa Alvarez Garrido. I am Gary Dushnitsky, and thank you for giving us the opportunity to share our findings with you.